Hello, Pastor Bray, Pastor Diane, and the whole church. We're so happy to be back here in Hammond, Louisiana. Ruth Jimena. What a blessing it is to be here and just give the word of God for what he has for you. So get comfortable at home, wherever you are, and listen to what God has for your life this weekend and this time. Yes. So let's go to the word of God. And I want you to open your Bible. And there is a verse in Genesis chapter 9, Genesis chapter 9, verse 1 to 4. And look at what the word says. It says, So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the air, on all that move on the earth and on all the fish of the sea. They're given into your hand. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs, but you shall not eat flesh with its life. That is its blood. Amen. Let's go and pray, and we're going to tell the Holy Spirit that he can bring a word of revelation to your life because we know this word is for you. Let's pray. Father, thank you. You are good and you're wonderful. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you can help us to understand your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you're taking us to the next level. And we know that you're bringing a fresh word to our hearts. Receive all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, the title of this message is... The Day After... Truth is that everybody's thinking, what's going to happen tomorrow? And more with these times that have been so different. And, and you know, everybody has been living in a pandemic or a quarantine. Everybody's been away from each other. But the expectation is, what's going to happen tomorrow? And the story of Noah is taking us to discover what God has has for us the day after, because we aren't going to be the same the day after. So God is taking us as a church into a time of answers, a different time. For God, this was not a surprise. God has everything under control. And we believe that the next days to finish 2020 and 2021 is going to be the best. The best is yet to come. I think Ruth Jimena and for everybody that uh, they're at home watching us, listening to this message, that God is bringing an acceleration. A lot of people at the beginning of this year, they would say, no, this year is going to be different, special. But God's plans are so different than ours. Then pandemic came to the whole world, but God is using it to bless his people, to bring us to our homes and also confront our hearts for the plans that he has from now on. One thing is before the pandemic and another thing is what happens the day after the pandemic, after everything happens, after everything finishes, uh, we're going into a new normal, but it's, it's, it's important to understand what is the Holy Spirit bringing and how is he's going to bless the church. Now, remember that Noah is the most prominent figure in the Old Testament, and he understood that the righteous should live by faith. And I think this is a time of depending on God. Noah's name means rest. Noah was a righteous man. He was a warrior. Noah never saw this kind of pandemic, this type of flooding. You and me, we've never seen this type of thing happen. We are living in historical times, but the good news is that the church never stops. God is not in a pandemic. The heavens are not in quarantine. God is activating you and giving you the promises and blessings And the evidence of Noah's faith was trusting God. And God told him, you're going to make this ark for you and your family so y'all could be safe. He simply needed to get into obedience. And we're going to talk about three principles today. Well, I think with Humana that uh, something that really 
impacted me about Noah's life is an, an example for us is the word obedience. He was obedient when the Lord told him to build this ark. It was a lot of years building it. Uh, God, the Lord gave him the measurements, but he was so just great and obedient. He built this ark. He was obedient. And after he built it and everything was ready, uh, uh, the order to go to this ark and then the quarantine started. Yeah, and of course, people were making fun of him. People were saying, man, this guy's crazy. How is he going to do this type of ark? Because we've never seen this type of flooding. I don't think this is real. But Noah was persevering in the promise. We're going to look at three principles. The first one, the effects of the quarantine. But look at this verse that is so key to understand the effects of the quarantine. The first verse that we're going to read is Genesis chapter 7. Verse 1. And look what the Lord is telling Noah. It says, going to the ark, you, it says you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Wow. And look at the verse 12, because it's important to connect verse 1 and 12. It says, and rain fell on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. It's something special. And what we've been living is the same thing that happened to, to Noah and his family. It says, go you and your family into the ark. It's been happening to us this year with a lot of families uh, in the U.S. or other countries in the world. We had to stay in our houses with our families. It was a special time. So... I know that the ark has some specific meanings of an encounter with Jesus. Yes, because it had some symbolic elements. In the Bible, everything that's mentioned is not just a coincidence. We know that the number 40 is a season. It's a time of purification, a time of cleansing. So everything has a meaning. I know for us, it was a surprise because it was a crisis something we weren't expecting, but God is under control. And God tells Noah, you're going to build an ark with one window. And in this window, it means that it's the only light source and it's pointing to the heavens. It wasn't just a coincidence. It was that window where Noah and his family were seeking God and depending on him and praying. And they had that direct connection with him. Yes, because this window, the only one pointing to the heavens, what does this represent? It represents Jesus. That is the light, incredible. The ark only had one window. Jesus is the light, salt and light. And this light, is pointing where? Jesus said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. And who goes to the Father except through me? So Jesus is the light. It's incredible. But it also, this ark also had one entrance. Yes, he only had one entrance. And this was symbolic because in your house, your house represents that protection. You know, your house has that one entrance and you know who goes in and who goes out. And this entrance represents Jesus. Jesus is the only door. Jesus is the only one that can make changes and transform your life. And us as the church of Jesus, we need to understand that he is the only way of salvation. But okay, let's, it's, it's so important and key to understand that it was one family. It was Noah, his wife, their three kids and their wives. It was one family. When you receive Jesus into your heart, you become part of the family. It's incredible how this, you know, works with Amanda because, you know, it means that this family, when you find Jesus, that he is the light and he is the door, you become part of that family. And when you become that family, I also see how God brings us all together in our houses because it's like a safe place where God is sanctifying us and purifying us, where we are seeing each other, talking to each other, parents to kids and kids to parents. You know, a lot of people were in their routines, but it was under our control. But God is saying, now I have the control of your ark, of your family, and it was only one ark. And that ark represents and shows us that God is one God. 
and we are one church and we need to understand the power of covering, how important this is that you can become a part of a church and be somebody that's involved in a church, honor your covering, honor your authority, because Noah was a leader. It's important to understand, uh, you know, this ark, you know, there's a lot of denominations, but there is only one church in the world. These times, it's truly amazing and wonderful. God is bringing a new opportunity of blessing to the United States of America. It's a great opportunity even for other countries in the world that where God is confronting us. There is a visitation. Listen to me carefully, United States. There is a visitation in, in coming from to Hammond, to Louisiana, around us. There's a visitation from the Holy Spirit. It's so special and unique. It's coming over every house, over every family, over every person, man, women, child. Because when you are in that ark or in your house, God is healing the hearts of the fathers and the hearts of their kids. That's what the Word says. It's a crucial moment where there is a spiritual revolution coming over the United States of America. And the ones that they don't know about Jesus, they will know about Jesus. He's the door. He's the light. And the ones that are not strong in Jesus, God is giving them the opportunity to stay strong. Miracles are coming, creative miracles. And God will lift up those strong men in Jesus, the ones that were preparing themselves this time in quarantine. The ministries, the churches that have been preparing themselves. The harvest is coming. Remember, there is... Two great harvests that happened in the past. The first one in the first church. The second one, the Reformed church. The first one was the uh, the fruit. Uh, and the second one was more fruit. But what is coming from now on, from today, it's so much fruit. It's something amazing. Now, of course, I'm pretty sure it wasn't easy to be in this space with limitations. But it was worth it. The sacrifice was worth it. And this was a time of sanctification. And in these times, our hearts have been exposed. You know who trusted in God. Probably you lost your job or you lost a family member. Or you've been a time of frustration and sadness. But there has been only one window looking at Jesus and seeing that door of salvation. And it's interesting to see these effects of purification in these 40 days. You know, God removed iniquity from the land. He removed the sin so we could have the day after. So today is the moment. It's a prophetic moment. The Bible talks to us about the 40 days of Jesus, 40 days of Moses, 40 days of Elijah, great men of God, that it was like a purification time. Let's think about something. How long did the ark stay on the water? You know, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights and the earth was flooded. But on the water, there's like a plan of salvation and the water was taking them. And it's like that baptism in water that saves a family. And you need to experience this. And the the ark was taking them for a year and 17 days. They were on the water. They didn't know where they were going, but God knew. So... It has been like this year, 2020. It has been a year that we're almost done with it. Uh, we're about to have a Thanksgiving week in, in this month, and we have to be so thankful for God. A lot of good news are coming for the United States from the Holy Spirit, you know, and after that, that growth is coming. So this is what we are going through. Of course, in the art, there, it was more than 45,000 animals. And you're like, wow, how can you do that, God? But the family was willing to. And we learned something important here. It's the second point. We talked about the effects of the quarantine. And we're talking about that the person that is strong and radical is radical. You cannot be a half Christian. You got to go all out. The second thing is this. Genesis 8 
20 through 21 says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings to them. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though... Every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood, and never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. Wow, this word is amazing. Look, Ruth Humana, that immediately when the ark landed on Mount Moriah and the water started going down, they opened the gates, they get out of the ark, but Noah's attitude, it was his own decision. And this is important to understand. He built an altar. And it's said in here, Noah did something so pure and correct and humble. And he built his altar and he offered it to God as a sacrifice burnt offering. He took all clean animals and all clean birds but I like this. What God, God's response to Noah's offering, it says that God was pleased with his aroma. And it said in his heart that he will never again curse the ground. He was pleased with the aroma. Now, what is an altar? It's a place of redemption, a place of celebration. It's a place of committing yourself or saying you're sorry to God. You know, every house needs to be an altar. We're restoring God's altar in our homes, an altar of worship for our homes, where we can say our house is a house of worship. It's a harvest at home. It's a life group. So everybody can be saved in my house. My house is not a place of gossip, of complaining, of cursing, but my house is a place of worship. It's not the church. The church is not the building. The church is your own house. This is where we restore God's altar. And God needs to be pleased with our offering. Yes, because this altar is going to be our homes. Houses from now on, the the next 10 years are going to be so essential and important. Your house needs to become a life group or a group of prayer. We're going to reach out to our neighbors, our family members, your house. From now on, you're going to say, God, my house is an altar of blessing. It's, uh, it's gonna, my house is going to be a part of the church. And we're going to be under this covering in our house from now on. It's going to become a life group. I believe it. How many people watching there right now? And you can say, God, my house is going to be a house of prayer. And God is going to visit you. It's going to bring miracles and blessings and great things for your family. And God will answer each one of your prayers. Do you believe it? Is that for you? Say, that's for me. Now, God has a sense of smell because God was pleased with the aroma of the house. What does your house smell like? Fighting and division? Or does your house smell like worship, purity, and harmony? You know, having an altar in your house is dedicating time to God. When I was 13 years old, I understood and learned having a house for God is important. I understood having a devotional with your family is important. And that made a difference, not only with my parents, but with my family. And now I could see my children serving this nation because two of my kids are youth pastors and missionaries in different states. And that is our offering. We dedicated our offering to Jesus and our children will serve you. And God wants you to restore the altar, the anointing, the calling. That house of the Lord needs to be restored in your life and in your home. The joy, the happiness, the victories and the worship. That is the second thing that happens with the effects of the quarantine. And there's a third point here. And after Noah gave his offering, 
God made a covenant with him and that the same covenant that he's making with his nation, he's making with your family, he's making with his church, pastors Brandy and Sibley, there's a new covenant coming to your life and God is saying that he's bringing the biggest growth, more anointing, more grace, creative miracles, something supernatural is coming for your life and the people are gonna be under your covering, they're gonna be honored and blessed. Even pastors and leaders will come Come, that they are going to want to receive that blessing. So there's some instructions. And what are these instructions? Genesis chapter 9 verse 1 says, Then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. Wow, these are the three blessings that God wants to bring on you the day after. Maybe you're asking, what's going to happen tomorrow? But God is saying, I want to make a covenant. You know, the rainbow was a sign of his covenant. And that is what the Lord wants to do. He wants to renew that covenant with you. Maybe you've been in a hard situation with this pandemic or other experiences, but God is telling you, you know, son, I love your heart of prayer and worship. And he says here, be fruitful. We are made to be fruitful. And the blessing of fruitfulness talks about a specific growth. We need to serve somebody in a crucial moment. And this is a crucial moment of being fruitful. God made you useful. God made you to be fruitful. God talks about fruits all over. And the key to receive that is for us to be radical and be committed to God. And when we receive the fruit, we need to take care of it and, and take care of it like it's needed with loyalty and faithfulness those people are gonna be honored the faithful and the loyal and multiplication comes to those who release their will to the lord and they say lord we don't want to be alone we don't want to just be there but we want everything that touches our hands to multiply this is a time of multiplication of the church we are living in crucial times in the united states and we need to go back to be that leader of influence where we multiply the gospel of jesus and we multiply the leadership because the harvest is plenty but the workers are few and it says Feel the earth. We need to fill homes with new families for Jesus. Filling the earth. It says, take Louisiana, take Hammond, Baton Rouge, all of these states. Pastors, come. Because it's the moment we're going to release a new anointing over you. And the ones are in my spirit. I will give that anointing of a multiplication, grace and favor. And you're going to be sanctified in this new time. So there is a calling for all the families. It's a calling for all the kids, the young people. Come, run. Because there is a new anointing of the Holy Holy Spirit that is coming over your life right now. Pastors, it's a moment. It's a crucial moment where God is bringing a growth, fruit, and you guys are going to feel the earth of the glory of God. Now, you're going to take your husband or your wife's hand and your children's hands, and as a family, we're going to make a covenant with God. Let's pray. And you're going to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, in this moment, we accept that we are sinners, that we have sinned and done wrong, but we open our hearts and we accept you as our only savior of our lives. We want you, Lord, and we believe that you are the only door, the only light. Restore our families, restore our children, and that the grace can be upon our houses and we bring this altar, our family, in front of you. Father, we bless every person that is watching us for the first time in this time, God. God is moving and is healing you right now. God is moving in your body right now. There's people that are sick right now. Put your hand in your affected area right now in Jesus' name. And by the blood of Jesus, you are healed. And that sickness is absorbed in Jesus' name. 
from your head to your feet. There is no sickness in your body. There is an anointing that is coming over you. God is healing. God is working right now, my friend. Right now, God is moving. We bless every person that is watching us for the first time, every leader, and the ones that left home are coming back. Come back to the house of the Lord. A lot of people left years ago. God is telling them, go back home. Those are the prodigal sons. Come back home because you're going to receive healing. Come with a faithful heart, humble heart. God is moving. He's telling you, son, I love you. I'm bringing you with love. I want to heal your heart. I am your father. I am your father. I'm that Shaddai, Jehovah Shaddai. And he's healing and redeem your heart right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit.